The fourth season of The Boys has already started filming, and in a recent tweet from showrunner Eric Kripke, it looks like we'll be missing a member from The Seven. The mural on the ceiling of The Seven's tower shows that there's been a change, and a certain member from the satirical Justice League is no longer there. What could this mean for that soup in the next season? Let's find out in this video. First of all, what did Eric tweet? The Boys has its very own universe on social media, with Vought International tweeting like a real business account, narrating the show's events as if they're happening in real life. This makes it all more fun with how the official account of the boys, the cast and fans react to their tweets. Kripke teased a bit of season 4 by posting a picture of the ceiling mural from the Seven Tower. Originally, it consisted of all seven members of the team, including Translucent, who was killed back in season 1. This time, there's a large empty space in the painting, and the showrunner captioned his tweet saying, who's missing from the ceiling mural? The post received many responses from fans and cast members, including Lori Holden, who played Crimson Countess in season 3, where she jokingly said, me, with a kiss emoji. Fans, on the other hand, made some more jokes but could easily guess who was out of the picture. You'd be surprised to see who's actually missing. Let's look at who's not in the mural anymore. As we've seen on the show, the Voigt building and the Seven Tower has a very detailed interior design with statues, a V-shaped table, and the topic of discussion, a ceiling mural. Okay, we're finally getting to the point. Drum roll, please. It was revealed that Starlight, of all people, has been removed from the mural. Pretty sure we all thought it'd be Black Noir after he was, spoiler warning, you know, or even translucent because no one remembers him after three whole seasons. He was also pretty problematic as far as we remember. A-Train and The Deep are slowly redeeming themselves as loyal partners to Homelander, so they're safe for now. And Queen Maeve is no longer in the team after she lost her powers and is living off the radar. Starlight was painted on the exact spot former member Lamplighter was. We got a bit of info on his backstory back in Season 2. Another important detail in the building is that gorgeous black sculpture of the team that we can see behind the entrance of the boardroom. That too had Annie replacing Lamplighter. The the question is, will Eric tweet a picture of that statue without Starlight next? What could all of this mean for the Seven's traitor? Following up with the fate of Starlight. In the latest season, Annie was on a mission to expose Homelander for the monster he truly is, but it all backfired when he threatened to kill anyone she cared about. On top of that, he didn't care if that footage from Flight 37 went viral anymore. Classic Homelander, huh? The finale showed Starlight being a new addition to Butcher's team, but does this ensure her safety? At this point, she's putting Huey in even more danger, right? Nonetheless, the boys now have two soups on their side, giving them an advantage against the Seven. Should they even be called the Seven anymore? Anymore, there are literally three members left, and one of them is hospitalized. After publicly humiliating Homelander and threatening to ruin his image, it's obvious that the new CEO of Vought International would remove the traitor from everything in the building. Starlight can now focus on bringing down the enemy in a more carefree environment because now there's no more publicity to face and no tension from working within the tower. Though, she may face problems with Butcher because of his hatred for soups. Maeve isn't around to defend Annie anymore because from the last battle against Soldier Boy, she was severely injured and lost her powers. She's also going to live a normal life with her partner away from anything soup related. No doubt, the former Seven member will be targeted by Homelander. We're yet to see how Victoria Newman, the head popper, comes into all this. So, what can we predict about Season 4? Now, for the rest of the characters. Butcher seems to be in turmoil right now after Temp V shortened his lifespan to about a few months. If the next will be the last, we can only hope to see an epic battle between the leaders of the Seven and the boys. Clearly, they can't go down the comic route anymore because in the source material, Black Noir, who's revealed to be Homelander's clone, kills him. Butch needs to get his head in the game since he lacks a lot of self-awareness. How much longer can he go on till he realizes that he's causing his own misfortune? At this point, it's probably too late to reconcile with Becca's son. But the thing is, Ryan is heading towards the bright burn path now that his biological dad gathered a bunch of supporters that idolized the violent tyrant to the point that they cheered after a protester's head was laser beamed off his body. Soldier Boy is back in his chamber, so the chances of his return are aren't zero. We've already seen Season 2's villain Stormfront appearing in Season 3, even though it was only for the first few episodes. Newman's role will have even more depth because now the main priority is to rid her from her powerful position. Only good soup is a dead soup, right? Lastly, what do we know about Season 4? Predictions and theories aside, a new star has recently been cast in the show. Any guesses? None other than The Walking Dead's Negan Smith, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Fans have always wanted this celebrity on the show. While Kripke and Morgan have been trying to make it happen for a while, scheduling would always intervene. Now it's confirmed that he'll be making a guest appearance so we can expect to see him in two or three episodes at least. His role is still a mystery, but some guesses include Tech Man, a Batman and Iron Man,
Man parody, which is very on brand for someone who played the comedian in Watchmen. Other fan casts include Mal Chemical, someone from Billy's military past, Frederick Vaught, and even Annie's dad, who's never made it to the screen. Again, Victoria Newman will be one of the major villains after she made a deal with Homelander to guarantee her position as vice president, making her a very powerful soup on the political side of things. Cameron Crivetti, the kid who plays Ryan, is now a series regular, meaning he'll be appearing in almost every episode. Bright burn it is. Black Noir's actor Nathan Mitchell is also making his return as another character because of how easy it is to recast a faceless role on the show. There's no confirmed release date, but shooting and production have already begun. We might be tuning in by mid-2023. Other news. First up, Sandman could have been like the boys. You heard that right. We recently found out that the Amazon Prime's showrunner pitched an idea for a Sandman series back in 2014. Since Kripke was working on Supernatural back then, it can only be assumed that Sandman would have landed in the CW along with the rest of the Arrowverse. This meant we would have gotten more crossovers. But creator Neil Gaiman wasn't entirely all in for this show, because when working with network TV, you tend to lose a lot of material that stays true to the comics. Although the boys writer is a huge fan of Gaiman's creation, he respectfully admits that the show wouldn't have worked out and the project was dissolved without anyone noticing. Up next, the return of Dean Winchester. Later this year, the prequel series to Supernatural is making its debut. The Winchesters will tell the story of Sam and Dean's parents, John and Mary Winchester. It'll comprise how the two fell in love and, of course, their story as hunters. Taking place in 1972, fans hope to see many actors reprising their roles. And luckily, Jensen Ackles is first on the list. Obviously, he won't be playing Dean himself, unless there's some sort of time jump, but he'll be narrating the story as the show goes on. But don't lose hope, this show can go on for a number of episodes, anything is possible. Lastly, a little about Chase Crawford's personal life. The OC's star Rachel Bilson invited The Deep to her podcast earlier this week, where they reminisce about their friendship back in the early days. This led to speculation and rumors that the Gossip Girl star and Bilson were romantically involved. Rachel, however, cleared the air and confirmed that these rumors were fabricated and she and Chase were never together. The damage control, however, made the heart of Dixie Star feel bad and thought that she was being too mean. The boys' star didn't even know about any of these rumors and found it all to be pretty funny. Talk about method acting. And that's all for this video. What are your predictions for the next season of The Boys? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, leave a like and subscribe to our channel to see more of our content. See you in the next one.